Hello and a very warm welcome to LMT Royal YouTube channel. The Sussex's first episode of Archwell Studios is out. It's a Christmas special. The description of this episode. As we come to the end of the year, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, and Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, present a special collection of inspiration, reflection, and perspective from guests around the world, including Stacey Abrams, Christina Dane, Jose Andres, Breen Brown, Rachel Cargill, Deepak Chopra, James Corden, Matt Haig, Sir Elton John, Hussein Manor, Naomi Osaka, Tyler Perry, and George the Poet, plus a surprise or two. Curated throughout the month of December, join them as they reflect on the year, speak openly about the power of compassion, and toast to a hopeful 2021. Welcome to our 2020 holiday special from Ultra Audio. I'm Harry. And I'm Megan. As we all know, it's been a year, and we really want to honor the compassion and kindness that has helped so many people get through it. And at the same time, to honor those who have experienced uncertainty and unthinkable loss. Our thoughts have been with you, especially during this holiday season. And in too many instances, people weren't able to be at a loved one's side or say goodbye as they would have wished. We also want to thank healthcare workers, frontline service workers, and so many others for their sacrifices. Thank you, guys. Thank you. As we come to the end of this year and look to the future, let's hold on to the lessons that we've learned about how important it is to take care of one another and how meaningful our connections are even when they're physically impossible. We thought, what if we can bring together some people that inspire us, people that we admire, and get their thoughts on what they learned from 2020? So we asked a few friends and a lot of other folks, activists, poets, athletes, writers, teachers, artists, people from all walks of life. Hello, my name is James Corden. My name is Rachel Cargill. Jose Andres. Christina Adana. My name is George the Poet, and I'm a spoken word artist. My name is Brene Brown. Deepa Chopra. Matt Haig. My name is Stacey Abrams, and I am a democracy advocate. My name is Elton John. My name is Tyler Perry. My name is Naomi Osaka, and I'm a tennis player. We asked them to record audio diaries and send them back to us. We were curious to hear what they'd reflect on when they had a moment to themselves, without navigating the sometimes awkward dance of a video chat. Meaning, no one having to say, you're on mute, over and over again, which is probably one of the defining phrases of 2020. <laughs> it's so true. We wanted to know what they'll remember about this year, how they'd explain it to future generations, what they learned about themselves, and what gives them hope. Their responses have given us a lot to think about. And it all came back to one thing, to the power of connection. We'll try not to interrupt too often, but we'll jump in here and there to make some intros. So sit back, grab a cozy beverage if you can. We hope this brings a little warmth, a smile, and something to think about. My name is Elton John. Well, we were in the middle of a tour, um, and then COVID started. And we came back to England in May, and it was very strange because we were going full pelt. Um, and then all of a sudden... We ground to a halt. I'm, I'm 73 years old and I'm a semi-diabetic, so I'm in a, a risky area there. I have an underlying condition, as they say. I've seen my immediate family, uh, Zachary, Elijah and David, all the time. But my relatives, um, who I love, haven't been able to see much of them at all. And I've only stayed connected with them by phone, of course, and by Zoom. My name is Matt Haig and I am a writer... I'm just going to jump in here because Matt is being very modest. He's the author of several books, including the best-selling Notes on a Nervous Planet, which we love, as well as Reasons to Stay Alive. That second one is about his own experience of severe depression. I was already in a bit of an anxiety dip anyway, as I often am in winter when the news started to come through. So it fueled all that stuff. I was addicted to the news and I'd find myself scrolling and scrolling and falling down sort of COVID rabbit holes. A close um, family friend died of cancer. He was my uh, father's best man. I'd sort of grown up with him. It felt particularly painful that we weren't able um, to go to his funeral as it was literally just for immediate family. And that, that's something that you would just automatically assume was always going to be a possibility to go to someone you cared about's funeral and that being taken away. I handled it one 
one day at a time with a lot of prayer. My name is Tyler Perry, and I am um, an actor, writer, philanthropist, I guess, a few things. The lowest moment came right before Thanksgiving. Um, we were feeding 5,000 families here at the studio, and I got in the car and drove around to see the line, and I realized that 5,000 was not enough. The need was so great. There were thousands more cars than gifts and groceries that we had to see people hungry and starving and children in the cars with their parents and people sleeping all night just to get groceries was heartbreaking on so many levels. An optometrist says 2020 is about vision, you know, eyesight. So I think it really opened our eyes to what was going on all around us, humanity, to the world. Someone who's helped a lot of people see things more clearly this year is Brené Brown, who we think is awesome. <laughs> She's a researcher, writer, and podcaster. Her work is rooted in the study of vulnerability, shame, and courage. I coped with a change this year one day at a time. Really back to basics. Um, sleep well, move well, eat well, and commit to unlearning and relearning and learning again where I needed to. One of my kind of lowest, hardest moments, and there were several of them this sh past year, was really trying to move through the fear about keeping my children safe while also giving them enough freedom to not have serious kind of social disconnection and mental health issues. With my team at work, um, we started a thing where we start every meeting with a two-word check-in, just two words that capture how you feel at the moment. It takes five minutes just to understand where people are and to be able to circle back with people who seem to really be in a tough place. My name is George the Poet, and I'm a spoken word artist. Right now, I'm recording from London. This year, to cope with all the change, I just took more pride in the little things. I had a deeper appreciation for going out for a walk, being able to see my loved ones. And thinking about these things consciously really opened my eyes to what was right in front of me. One of the hardest moments for me this year was when a loved one who was pregnant at the time was hospitalized with COVID and forced into a, an early delivery. Fortunately, she made it. The baby made it too. They're now happy and healthy, but that was um, that was quite a scary moment. As people around the world grapple with massive change and uncertainty this year, and honestly some really scary things like George has touched on there, our collective mental health has been at the forefront of people's minds, and rightly so. Yeah, a lot of our guests touched on this, and Rachel Cargill was one of them. She's a writer, an anti-racism activist, She's also the founder of the Loveland Foundation, which is an amazing organization dedicated to bringing healing and mental health services to communities of color, especially Black women and girls. Something that I've learned about myself this year is how much of a spiritual practice simplicity and solitude can be. One of the lowest moments for me this year was definitely in June. In what felt like the height of the pandemic, I received news that my mother had been given a terminal cancer diagnosis. The fear and pain around news like that um, is heavy in itself, but in the midst of a pandemic where a patient can't have a guest by their side and through the thoughts of a pending loss without being able to grieve in community, it was really all-consuming for me. Um, my mother has continued to heal and she has far surpassed the terminal time frame she was given. But that moment, you know, it wasn't just happening to me, it happened to so many major life moments we all had to fight through with a particular grit and grace to remain above water in these times. My name is Stacey Abrams, and I am a democracy advocate, dabbler in politics and progressive policy, and I write books. Right now, I'm recording from Atlanta, Georgia. I gave myself permission to watch all the television I wanted, to read when I should have been working, and to make mistakes. But most of all, I gave myself permission to be sad so I could find joy on the other side. I love the state of Georgia. 
And this year was a year when that love was tested, where the darkest moments, like the murders of Maud Arbery of Glen County and Rayshard Brooks of Atlanta, they were met with silence and sometimes with anger. But they were also met with the persistence of young voices who were in the streets demanding change. But they also demanded change at the ballot box. That's something I'd always hoped for for Georgia. But to know that it was real, to see it in action, was just transformative. My name is Jose Andres, and I am a cook. Jumping in, uh, sorry, but I have to again, because Jose is being incredibly humble. He is a cook and also owns amazing restaurants across the United States. But on top of that, he really empowers communities through food. He's the founder of the nonprofit World Central Kitchen, which provides meals after natural disasters all over the world. My lowest moment was when I had to announce that my restaurant on March 14th were all closing. That was as hard as any moment I've experienced in my life. I didn't know when we will be able to reopen again. I had to tell people that they've been with me for 27 years that tomorrow they will not have a place to work. We were able to help uh, keeping all of them during five, six weeks on payroll. For me, I remember having tears on my face, not knowing when I will be able to open again. I'm very afraid of the future. Jose would feel differently the next day when World Central Kitchen kicked into action. Well, one of my happiest moments was actually the day after I announced I was closing my restaurants. Um, I announced that we were moving from restaurants to trying to feed as many people as we could. We were able to show that restaurants becoming community kitchens could be feeding the homeless, could be feeding the hospitals, could be feeding anybody in need of a plate of food. My mother, my father, who are no longer with us, they were nurses. I was able, since I was a young kid, to see the empathy and the love that many health employees will put in their work. I was so proud that thousands and thousands of chefs and volunteers, we began reacting to the problems. When hospitals needed somebody to feed them, we show up. For some of our guests, looking outwards was the answer. While for others, they found the strength and comfort they needed right at home. Hello, my name is James Corden. I host The Late Late Show on CBS. And right now I'm recording from the spare bedroom in our house. I think what I've learned about myself is I really don't have FOMO. I'm very happy staying in. I mean, I could lose a day just staring at the corner of a rug. That's what I've realized. And I've been okay with that. I think being able to spend such time with my children, I feel like my relationship with them has changed. Being around them more, you know, the five of us in our house has really brought quite a lot of joy to me. Connection was crucial for all of us this year in whatever way we found it. Sometimes standing at a distance, sometimes just through a screen. And Loveland Foundation creator Rachel Cargill found community through an experiment with some of her favorite kids' books. I thought that one of the ways that I could serve um, my family and my friends and my community was to hop on live to my social media platforms once a day and read children's books. Children's books are a huge part of my love of the literary world. It was a huge part of my childhood, and I recognized it as a way to possibly give a little bit of um, connectedness and downtime for all of the children who were having these big changes of not going to school anymore, staying at home all day with their parents. And so reading books was definitely nourishing for both the reader and the listener.
Christina Adana is a 17-year-old climate and food activist and campaigner with Bite Back 2030. She wants to make the world a healthier place for young people. So during the first month of lockdown, my closest friends and I had a FaceTime call every single day at 8 p.m. just to talk about what we did during the day, even though it probably wasn't much, and just how we felt. And I felt very much connected with them. I knew they were only a phone call away and that they were always going to answer because we were all stuck in our houses. Maybe that's because we're Gen Z and all we know is social media, but um, I feel like we had conversations that would have been difficult to have in real life. Um, And it's ironic because I felt like I had developed a, a... a deeper relationship, even though we were we were so separated and we couldn't see each other. And this is something we heard from others too. My name is Naomi Osaka and I'm a tennis player. I coped with all the change this year um, just by talking to my family a lot and um, in the middle of quarantine, um, I play games with my sister a lot on the PlayStation, we were just playing almost every day, and it felt like she was literally right next to me all the time. Spoken word performer George the Poet had this to share. My little brother's birthday, my little brother turned 23 this year. That was one of those moments. We were all on the call, like there's six of us kids, and um, that was one of the first times where we all got to really touch base. Um, and it was just fun. It was just so, it was like, it was like being in the room as kids again, even though we're in different rooms as grown ups now. That was beautiful. And for Elton, video conferencing was more than just a way to connect. You know, I'm a recovering alcoholic, so I have a, an A meeting from this house every Sunday. I connect with my friends who um, I've known for about 30 years in the program. Um, and that's great. And if it hadn't have been for Zoom, I don't know what we would have done. I really don't. Without Zoom, it's been, uh, it, it's been a lifesaver. Twenty twenty was a year that none of us could have ever imagined. We wanted to hear from our guests on what they would tell the future about this moment in time. If you were to write a letter to your future about this moment, what would the first two sentences be? I think the first few sentences would would start off with, we never want to go back to a time where we had to cover everyone's smile, where you could not see any smiles. We are our best selves or our worst selves when we are in fear. Never forget, it is a choice. These two sentences um, are the words of Maya Angelou, and they are, My wish for you is that you continue. Continue to be who and how you are, to astonish a mean world with your acts of kindness. Okay, something like, The world woke up. We realized how connected we all are to each other, to the natural world, to other species. And we saw how human beings can rise to any challenge when we feel its importance. We've been given a chance to change. Only you know if we did. My name is Deepak Chopra. And uh, I am uh, a writer, a medical doctor, and an explorer of consciousness. I discovered that we can all make each other feel better by finding meaning and purpose in our life. Not trying to change another person is hard enough to change ourselves. My mantra now has to be love in action, that we should do something to help people. Because love without action is irrelevant and action without love is meaningless. That the future of humanity lies in um, cooperation rather than predation. Climate change, pandemics, depression, extinction of species, 
war, terrorism. This is an old story. And what I'm learning now is humanity is ready for a new story. New context, new meanings, new relationships, giving birth to a new humanity. As we enter the new year, both Brené and Rachel shared what's top of mind for them. What I hope for 2021 is empathy and accountability in equal measure. Empathy is actually very important. As someone who studied it for over two decades, I'm for it. But there is no empathy without accountability. I'm hoping that the seemingly awakened minds and hearts of this country and around the world, that they turn into footsteps of action for real and tangible change. And some more things to be hopeful for in 2021 from Naomi, Tyler, and Jose. I hope that all my friends and family um, stay safe and do well and they're all happy. And I hope that for me, I don't weigh whether I'm a good person or a bad person on if I win or lose a tennis match. That's always my ultimate goal. More than anything, I'm just hoping to see more and more smiles in 2021. We never want to go back to a time where we couldn't hug or touch or love people because of a virus. We have to take care of our planet. We have to take care of ourselves. We have to take care of each other. What I hope in 2021 is that we will understand that we are only as good as the people we have around us. That we, the people, the three words that very much, in essence, are the beginning of the American dream, of the American nation, is more important than ever. We, the people, respecting each other, understanding that the people that don't think that you are not your enemy, but are people that actually are able to help you understand other points of view. For youth activist Christina, this feels like a moment to take a step back, for the world to imagine a new future, to envision what could happen. I want serious measures taken to address the climate emergency globally. I want young people's voices to be at the center of building back better. I want to see progressive steps towards true racial justice. I want more empathy and love from everyone. I want truth and transparency from the people in power. That's all I want to manifest. And for democracy advocate Stacey Abrams, it's all about the work to come. My 14-year-old niece asked me when things would get back to normal whether around COVID or the protests for racial justice. I always try to be honest with her, and I couldn't offer a satisfactory answer that felt true to me. So I had to tell her I didn't know, but that all we could do was work for what we thought was right. I hope after this awful pandemic has passed and we can go back to some sort of normality, that we have become better people. And I hope for healing. It's been an awful time for people. People have lost loved ones. People have had lost their businesses. They've lost work. Um, it, it's been an awful time for people. So I hope that we can heal in 2021. Cheers to that, Elton. So true. So we also asked Hussein Manowar to share an audio recording with us. And just as 2020 sparked reflection for most it also sparked creativity. So when we received this, we knew we had to share it with you as a whole. Yes. <laughs> so we have to play the whole thing for you. Take it away, Hussein. Hello. My name is Hussein Manawa, and I am a poet. At this very moment in time, I'm recording from Illywood Studios in East London, neighboring the River Thames, where the tide brushes past you daily. And somewhere along this infinity, I am constantly reminded, 2020, that's a very hard year for me to call my friend. Coping mechanisms for me included those from artistic practice, writing to thyself to express release and instruction through linguistic acrobatics. One of the hardest moments of the year was seeing the theatres close, 
feeling prohibited from experiencing therapeutic societal dramatic. The happiest moment was hearing my baby niece say, and every time I still feel the static. So Harry and Meghan, you're asking me, what did I learn about me? <sighs> All right, well, I'm going to be honest here. I learned I'm a mess. And with no discipline, I'll let it all pile up and I'll act like I don't know what it is, but I know exactly what it is that's causing me stress. I learnt my loved ones can be at a distance and I can still love. I learnt that through every bit of pain you are constantly being dealt, you can still excel above. I learnt that you could lose, lose your mother, lose your father, but you can never lose what they gave you and that was the will to never give up. So despite the distance and every little thing that tried it, interjected, disrespected, came into your space and overprojected. I learned you don't need to be in the same room, country or continent to feel love from your friends and family when you're really connected. And if I were to describe this moment in a letter to the future, I'd say I'm glad this year is coming to an end. And I am not happy that it happened because we lost too many of our loved ones through ways we'd never imagined. But I hope 2021 brings us peace, love, and all the time, all the time, we, you, everyone, them, I, me, needs for our minds to heal. I hope 2021 brings you everything you wish for in only ways you know that it's real. So to a toast, to the year ahead. Come on, oi oi, man from East London in it, Ilford. You know I gotta keep it real. What an amazing, powerful piece of poetry, Hussein. Thank you so, so much for doing that for us. We're also so excited to look ahead to 2021. And we asked everyone to make a toast. A toast to the year ahead. A toast to our hopes for the future. A toast to all of us. Here's to 2021 being the best year yet where we take everything we learned in 2020 that removed us from each other and let 2021 be the year that brings us closer and closer together. It's time to turn the page and start a new chapter in our lives as we are more grateful than ever to be alive. Well, muzzle tov to 2021. 2020 couldn't have been worse. It's the worst year I've ever known. I'm 73. So let's just go onwards and upwards and have the best year in 2021. Here is to an awkward, brave, and kind 2021. Here's to survival and dreams May they ever be bound in our memories of yesterday and fuel our energies for tomorrow. My choice for the next year, love in action. We are never alone. I hope that at some point in 2021, we can enjoy a hug with our families. The years go by so fast. Let's hope the next beats the last. Stay safe, everybody. I hope that 2021 is a year where the courage and the creativity and the power and the possibility that's been resting in our bones shakes loose and emerges as our new skin. I hope that we wear it well and we wear it all year long. So here's to us and here's to 2021. Without the dark, stars have no way to shine. And next year, whatever light emerges will be there to dazzle us. A toast to 2021. I'm sure it's going to be a great step forward from what 2020 became. P.S. By the time you guys hear me, I will be engaged. So I'd love to give a shout out to my beautiful fiance, Sandra, who has no idea about any of this at the time of the recording. Wish us luck, guys. That's amazing. That's and, great. And George and Sandra, congratulations. Congratulations, guys. George, hopefully it was a yes. If it's not, or if it wasn't, <laughs> then this is kind of awkward. So we're going to go with it was a yes. It was a of yes. course, In which it case, was a congratulations, yes. Congratulations. And, and from us, I will say no matter what life throws at you guys, trust us when we say 
love wins. Love always wins. So true. Thank you to all of our guests. And with that, we have something we wanted to share with you too. Not a toast per se, but a song, which is about shining a light. And a song that means so much to us. This little light of mine played at the very end of our wedding while we were walking down the steps of the church. It was the music that we wanted playing when we started our lives together. Because as we all know, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. The message of this song is one we hold so dearly. It's about using the power we each have within us to make this world a better place. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus even more LMT Royal videos about your favorite royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Don't stop.